So I had a great question on one of my YouTube videos about how do I go about mixing and automating my mixing using just buttons. So today we're going to show how to do that. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan and thank you so much for all those who have joined in in the family and subbed and watching these videos and liking them. It's been amazing. Love reading your comments as well. Thank you to all those who have joined in. So welcome back. So today I'm going to show you how I'm going about doing this. So a quick recap of my setup. I've got a Behringer Air XR16 as my mixer. I've got a um, 18 Mini Pro, oh, sorry, 18 Mini Extreme ISO and a bunch of other different bits and pieces. So I'm controlling all of this using BitFocus Companion. Great little bit of free open source software which can control a lot of different things. So this doesn't just work with Behringer, this will work with most digital mixing consoles. There seems to be uh, modules for most of the consoles out there these days. But in today's episode, we're just gonna talk through about how we're controlling the Behringer side of things. So let's jump into that. So first things first, this is what I typically use in terms of my mixer and mixer replacement on my setup. So I've got uh, a whole bunch of volume ups, a whole bunch of volume downs, and these are the main channels which I use for the most part. So if I bring this across as well, you can see that the um, channels here are linked up to the channels on my mixer. Bring that full screen for you. So for example, SRT1, um, is there, and if I adjust this window, um, you'll be able to see that when I press these buttons, my mix, my fader is going up and down. So it's not gonna be the most smooth of transitions, but it'll work. Uh, and I can also go about muting and unmuting things. So red means it's on, green means it's safe. So that's how I've set that up there. And I've got a bunch of DCAs, which I'm actually no longer using anymore because I'll show you how I'm doing that now. And these are the uh, FX buses, which I'm using to go out to the world. So I just realized that I just muted that for you. So you wouldn't have heard that. Um, so if I was to turn this off, this would no longer go to the world or to the record. This will only go internal. So when I'm doing, when I have a guest uh, on, on the call, I can have a chat with them during a video and know that it's not going to wear. But let's have a look deep into what these buttons are doing and how I've gone about to actually do this. So we'll go first into the um, the volume up and down. So I'll just call the button uh, volume up. Let's see if I can make that any bigger, but it doesn't seem like I can. So what I've done is I've gone through and made a connection to the uh, console itself. So the XR, uh, which is a module built into the system. So if I go here, for example, and type in uh, air, it'll show up as a connection there. So I can add that connection. So I won't do that because I've already got it, but all I have to do is put in my IP address of the um, XR, give it a name, and that's all I need to do. So make sure it's got an okay connection and you're good to go. So now that I've done that, there's a whole bunch of different actions which are now available to me. So if I type in air, I have a whole bunch of different things which I can do on a button press. So for example, I can go fader set or fader adjust. Right now I've got a XR fader adjust happening. So on channels one to 16, so the fader adjust can be done to all the effects returns, effects sends, master buses, DCA. So right now I've just done the channel itself and I've selected which channel. So channel one to 16, channel one, which was the SRT um, one feed and I'm telling it to adjust by two. Now I believe this is two dB, but uh, do your you can do testing as well. And how long I want that to fade for. So for example, if I wanted to adjust by say 20 and do it for 2000 milliseconds or not, or maybe a bit more like that. Let's, uh, let's see what that looks like. So if I was to press the button now, I'll bring this across so that we don't cover what's going on. So now if I press this button, you can see the fader is going up nice and slowly uh, plus 10, which is I believe what I set to. And now I can bring that back down again. So that's a super easy way of just actually adjusting your toggles. So I've just done all of these. So I'll bring this back to as I had it. So bring that back to two and just a little fade for this um, movement. Um, so I've done that with every channel. So 
every channel that I need. So I've got, like I went to channel seven there, went to channel nine because some of them are stereo and they're linked. So yeah, super simple in terms of getting the, the volume going. Now, what we can do as well is that all these channels actually get their name from the console itself. So there are variables in Companion. So if I go to my variables tab and click on my Behringer, I can have a look through here and it will tell me a whole bunch of different variables which are going to be getting live feedback from the uh, setup itself, including things like firmware, names, uh, where the level is at the moment of different channels. So we can look at channel one. Yeah, so channel one solo level, solo... Oh, sorry, that's a solo level. Um, so we're looking at buses at the moment. So let's look at channel one label. So channel one label is SRT1. So if we were to copy this and put this into the button, into the name of the button, which we've got here. So we've got the dollar sign XR channel one. So this is what we've actually put into the button and this is what's actually coming out. So we've got SRT one, which is the name of the channel and the channel one uh, D, which if we look back here, channel one D is the channel one DB. So it's a D DB level there, uh, which right now is at, uh, that's channel two, is plus 0.7. So this is how I can have a quick glance and look around and go, cool, everything's at zero, everything's looking great. Uh, the computer here has got a Infinity logo there. So that is sitting at, uh, it's faders all the way down and off. And uh, Playout B is also off and it's also green, which means that it's muted. Uh, so that's a very basic rundown of how I go about doing basic mixing on the XR or on any digital mixer itself. Sorry, I say any most of them. I haven't gone and checked every single mixer, but you should be able to, most mixers should be able to work with this. So long as it's got a, um, it is a digital console and it has uh, network access. So yeah, so this is how I've gone about that. Now what I've done in here is that I've got some effects buses, which I'm using basically as uh, buses going to my main left, right layer, going to the outside world. So I'm using a effects return. So it's going into an FX and then back out again. And I am toggling the mute and unmute. So the reason why the red is working at the moment is that I've got in the feedback status down the bottom, we've got um, different states to show what's happening. So in my XA indicate FX return mute status, uh, when the state is set to off, uh, so my FX one is set to off, I'm going to get a, a red red background. So that's what we want. So when the mute is off, that means that the channel is open. So red for me means tally, tally's on. So that is what I'm doing there. And then the same thing for on turns into green. So if I was to press this, now the guests are not going to the world. Uh, and that is, sorry, the guests, uh, yeah, are not going to the world. So that channel is clear from the world. And then red, uh, you can go back again. So that is getting live feedback from the console saying whether it's muted or unmuted. And you can choose whatever color you want. You can even have little images. You can do a whole bunch of fun little things. But I'm just keeping mine simple. Red means you're dead. Green means you're good to go. Um, yeah, so that is how I am doing that. So how do I go about automating my my shows? So most of my live streams, actually pretty much all my live streams, all happen within these buttons. Uh, so you've seen uh, a bunch already. So. For example, if I was to press start show, that is going to sting. And actually, it does a whole bunch of things. It's going to sting to the super source, which is what I basically cut everything on. So let's have a look at what's going on inside this button. And you can see there's quite a lot there. So let's bring that full screen. So first thing I'm doing is I'm bringing my super source on preview. Um, I am stopping my video playbacks after 4,000 milliseconds. And I'm starting to... This is where I'm getting into the fader, fader stuff. So what I'm doing is my channel uh, 11, uh, that is my play at B. So when I'm doing video playbacks, that's coming through play at B. So I'm telling that after after 1000 milliseconds, so wait a second, uh, fade to nothing, fade down to, to infinity, uh, channel 11 for 1.5 seconds. So when I'm doing a pre-roll, for example, which has a uh, video on it, uh, my 
in my uh, start my count. So let's show you the countdown. Um, that does a whole bunch of things. It'll start playing the right video. And then I'm telling the video to go up to minus six, which is what I've determined is a decent uh, number for uh, the countdown. And it's going to unmute that channel and bring it up to the um, to the level that I set it to. And I can very easily go through and um, adjust what level I want each video to play back at. So I can set this up individually for each uh, option. But for the most part, I have my playout be down and muted so that I can see, look down and go, cool, my video is no longer playing. So if, even if I'm not monitoring it, I know that my videos are clear. Uh, so if there's a video still going, for example, I faded it down and it's all done. Um, so yeah, let me show you what I've done. So in my start show, I've got my video playback will fade in after a second and fade over 1.5 seconds. So I'll do a nice little fade up. Um, and then my effects return number one will unmute, uh, which is this microphone. So sorry, this is the start show. So we've finished the video, the video is going to fade down and then we're going to unmute this microphone and make it open to the world. So as soon as I hit start show, this microphone becomes unmuted to the, to the world and is open. And also my guest microphones, which is effects two and three all get unmuted. So basically at any point I can press start show. And so if I ever mess anything up, it'll unmute everything right where I need it to be because I've set up all these presets for each fader ready to go. Um, and also after three seconds, the uh, channel 11 will mute and there's a whole bunch of other things. So super powerful what you can do with all this and things like, so I'm running the sting animation. I've got a video, which I'll, I'll put up there so you can see how you can do it for yourself. So I'm running the sting inside the ATEM itself. And I'm even actually running a, um, the sting audio through the the uh, mixer itself. So in the in this mixer, it's got a uh, USB playback. So I've just got a little USB stick plugged in there with my sting audio. So all I'm doing with that is that when I hit um, the button, it's basically telling the tape operation, which is the tape uh, USB playback, to hit play. So when I hit play, uh, that will play the sting audio, which I've already set to a determined level. And that is how I'm getting my Sting video and audio all happening at the same time. Um, and I've got things like OBS is changing, which I'm using for my graphics and things like that. So a whole bunch of different things that you can do all in a single button press. Uh, so for example, um, when I hit uh, this button, which by the way, you should do, um, that is loading my OBS scene for my subscribe. So that's happening in OBS and it's turning on my keys and off my keys. It's unmuting um, different things and muting different things. So actually that's a, uh, these are some old DCAs which I don't use anymore. So there's a few things I need to clean up, but so yeah, I guess the, the main thing about this is that it's super powerful. There's a lot that you can do, but you can very quickly and very easily get, get stuck. So the, the key thing that I, can, I can't, can't stress enough is that press every single button that you ever think that you'll ever need to do, preferably in the order that you're going to do it as well. Uh, there's been too many times where I've kind of gone, oh yeah, that's fine. And I've gone and pressed a button and it's gone and muted something which I did ages ago uh, or unmuted something that I didn't want unmuted. So test everything um, because this can be super powerful, but it can also sting you a lot as well. But yeah, that's basically how I'm doing it because I've got my software here so I can have a visual um, visual to see what's going on. Um, yeah, I'm just, this software is actually quite handy. There's a lot in it that you can do. But for the most part, I programmed this as I wanted to and I'm just using Companion to do all the actual work. So that's it. I hope that helped. If you have any questions, hit them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. But yeah, I'm super keen to see what you guys come up with as well. And uh, now I am going to hit an outro button. So let's go through what that button actually does. So it's going to put a playout B in the um, preview. It's going to run my sting. It's going to load up my uh, outro video. Sorry, I should bring that up so you can see what's going on here. Um, it's going to fade up my uh, audio to zero and it's going to mute all my microphones that I... Actually, that needs to be a mute. 
mute all my microphones and unmute the um, the audio channel for the video playbacks. Now, the order of these don't necessarily matter, but there are things that you're going to want to do before other things. So it doesn't matter where it is in the line, as long as your delays are set right so that things happen in the right order. Um, and yeah, so that's basically it. So I don't want that to happen. Um, but now I'm going to press the outro button, say, say goodbye now, and it's going to mute my microphone, play the video, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much. <laughs>